I've got some new products from Jeffree Star to share with you guys today and they are, I've got two of the skin frosts which I purchased off of Beautylish because I knew that I was going to get them quicker than if I ordered them off the Jeffree Star website and Beautylish didn't get the Beauty Killer palette um, so I ordered this one off the Jeffree Star website and then after the fact I was like man then I had to pay shipping <laughs> I guess it wasn't over like a hundred dollars or something but in any event I've been using the skin frosts since I've gotten them so I do have a pretty good like review of the skin frosts and then kind of a first impressions would be the Beauty Killer palette because today is the first time that I had used it and I demoed both the skin frosts and the eyeshadow palette which would be the look and the highlighter on my face and that will be towards the end of the video for you guys if you're interested in that. I'll start off talking about the skin frosts and the one that I have on today is in the shade Ice Cold and this one here I actually thought it was going to be more of a stark white but there is a little bit of a warm undertone to it. Um, You can't really detect that so much on the skin but it isn't like a flat like white white. It almost has a, a slight cream to it. When I used this for the first time I went in with my normal fluffy brush that I use for highlighter and put it on my face how I would another highlighter and now I know that these are supposed to be super intense and in your face which me personally I am all about that shine like a diamond highlighter <laughs> but the thing what when I put this on like my normal highlighter like I was going around that day and I could just see so much texture on my skin and I don't have really textured skin and then also I looked like a grease ball and I was like you know I did put it on like my other ones and I know this is supposed to be intense but I was like it's not supposed to emphasize so much texture in my face so the next time that I had used it I went in with it quite sparingly and I had used the Anastasia highlighter brush which is a stiff brush and you would think that a softer brush would do better with a product like this because it's so intense but the softer the brush it just doesn't buff and break down the product on the skin how I liked it so I was using this one here which isn't the softest brush in the world and really buffing it into the skin otherwise if you do use a light like fluffy brush you can actually have just particles of product sitting on your skin. <laughs> because this is supposed to be such an intense product, I feel like I should have been able to use it how I use my other highlighters and get that intensity out of it without the emphasizing of texture and also when I use it with the Anastasia brush, it's the A23, I just dip in it lightly like that, I tap it off, and then I really buff in little circles on my skin. Like you really have to buff this product into the skin because it's quite chunky. When I use it lightly with this brush and really buff it into the skin, I do like it. But I wish that I was able to wear it heavy, you know, because I feel like the skin frost, I should be able to wear it heavier without looking either greasy or that emphasizing of like texture on my face. The other one that I purchased is in the shade Mint Condition and it is a green highlighter. And I purchased this because of the uniqueness of it. This I've worn on my face by it itself I've used just the green and it's like a stripe of green and on my fair skin tone it's borderline looks like a bruise so I don't like it as a highlighter on my face I also mixed it in with the uh, ice cold the white one to try to tone down that greenness in there and I also felt like you could st still see too much of like a green in it and on my fair skin tone it just made it look that area look like there was a bruise that was kind <laughs> of going away there. So the next time I thought I would use this as an eyeshadow because I, I believe I've seen him or Jeffree Star reference it as you know use it on your eyes and so I used this on the eyes and in order to get that shimmery green I felt like I really had to pack it on and then the same thing when I packed this on like I felt like I did not like my lid eyeshadow that day. It like emphasized all the fine lines and the texture of my eyelid. Same same thing. <laughs> but like if I were to put it on lightly, then I wasn't going to get the intensity and the shiny greenness of it as if I would have were packed it on. So had I used it lightly, I don't think it would have emphasized so much texture and stuff just like the um, when I use these products on my face but then I wouldn't get that intensity out of it so same type of ordeal they're the same type of formulas the formula almost like pills or kind of sticks to itself that's why I feel like this more stiff Anastasia brush really breaks down any chunkiness that comes out of here and buffs it more into the skin because I don't think necessarily that there's a ton of like glitter in here um, at first glance that may be what you would think but actually it's just the product itself is sticking together kind of in little clumps because if you get a clump and you really go like this to it it will shear and you know break that apart so you don't see like visible chunks. With the highlighters I think I'm going to keep the ice cold shade because I feel like I can get it to look quite pretty on the skin like today I think that it looks really nice um, but the mint condition shade when I use it on my eyes and my face I didn't like it 
either way. These highlighters are huge. The packaging is plastic as well, which I do really like the packaging on that. Um, and this is it compared to the Dior highlighter that I love, the Glowing Gardens one. And on the back it says there's 0.53 ounces of product, which is, it's quite a bit of product. Here is the Skin Frost in the shade Ice Cold. This is the one that I'm wearing today. And this is what it looks like right there. And I'll swatch it. So you can kind of see what it, like the chunkiness now, if I really, really, really buff this in, is how I like it the best. This sheen part. Hopefully this will give you a better idea of the texture. This is that in Anastasia brush, like that. You can see that, like, it's chunks of product falling off of there. I think that this should have been smoother and more finely milled. And then here is the shade Mint Condition. Again, it's just super, like, chunky. It. It's like the product kind of sticks too much to itself, but it's blended. If you really buff it, but even in the, you can even kind of see in the camera, like how much texture it brought out in my hand even. Moving on to the eyeshadow palette. It's the Jeffree Star Cosmetics Beauty Killer Eyeshadow Palette. And there is a total of 0 0.09 ounces of product in here. On the cover of the box, it says net weight 0 0.09 ounces slash 2.52 grams. And I want to say that each eyeshadow is 0 0.09 ounces a piece because they're quite large pans. I'm just going to go with that. <laughs> so each eyeshadow, I'm pretty sure, is 0 0.09 ounces, which is a significant amount of product. Now, the, the actual palette is cardboard packaging. I really wish that he would have kind of mimicked the highlighters and stuck with a harder plastic. I think that would have been nicer. And then also, I wish he would have printed um, the information on the back of the palette just like it was printed on the back of the box. Flipping the palette open and talking a little bit about the shades in here, there are four matte eyeshadows, which I did use all four of those on my eyes today. I really wanted to use mattes from the crease up and blend them together to see how those mattes kind of built and blended. And I did have... I kept, I felt like I kept layering and blending and layering and blending and this shade here used Vanity in the crease and I blended it out with Courtney which is like the matte transition type shade in the palette and I just couldn't get the lines to buff together so I kind of went over them with Star Power and then which I hadn't planned on using the Star Power shade anywhere other than the lid at least in today's look and I just had to... I had to work at blending the matte eyeshadows together. Two other shades that I used on the lid were Princess in the inner portion and then Violence on the outer portion and I feel like both of those shades were really nice. Uh, another thing with all of the shades that I used in here, which was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, <laughs> seven out of ten shades, I had very, very minimal fallout. And then the shade Rich Bitch, um, the texture on that is just not good. <laughs> Hopefully you'll be able to see in a swatch. I definitely need to play with this guy more so this is kind of my first impressions on this. I felt like I had to work just a little bit harder than I would have liked to blending out those matte eyeshadows. But I'm going to go ahead and zoom in and give you guys swatches and hopefully you'll be able to see for yourself whether it's something you would like. You can see that it's pretty thin. The packaging is cardboard. It has a magnetic type of closure. Then you do have a mirror in there that folds all the way backwards. And then here are your shades. For matte eyeshadows, this uh, bright pink is matte. This shade here, which I thought was going to be perfect for transitioning, um, it, it just didn't blend together with the shade that I put in the crease very well. Even when I topped the pink over this to try to mesh them a little bit more, they still just didn't like build and blend the greatest. And then this one right here is a matte. And this one is a matte. And I did use the turquoise shade, which does have some micro glitters in it on my lower lash line as well. And the other one that has got the micro glitters in it is this black over here. The ones that I really like how they feel are the shade Confession, Princess, and Violence. Even the one expensive, even though it's got some like micro glitters in it, it still feels really nice. Let's give you some swatches. Here's the pink. It almost, they feel a little dry maybe. So I'll swatch these next two, which I really like the texture of both this guy and this guy. This color is beautiful. I almost wish I would have used it today. 
but I really wanted to get a feel for those matte eyeshadows. So pretty. It almost has like a pink duochrome to it. And then Rich Bitch and China White. And the last two are Courtney and Black Rainbow. Well, that is an of black. <laughs> you can kind of see the sparkles in there. I definitely need to play with the palette more. Um, first impressions are like, you know, so-so. I'm not a fan of the uh, the Rich Bits shade. It's really chunky. Um, and the mattes, I, I really had high hopes for the mattes to just kind of be effortless. And when I put on my eyeshadow, I know I do it in a little bit different way, but it, it's what works for me and my dry lids. And the thing of it is, is I, I always go about it in the easiest approach. Like the least amount of blending, the highest amount of pigmentation, um, and the quickest. So that's kind of how I put it on my eyes. And when I have to continually blend it, build and blend like that, the eyeshadows become... Um, less easy to work with. Hopefully that was helpful for you guys. Now if you're interested in seeing these products in action and the look that's on my face, you can hang tight and we'll get into it right now. Using an Anastasia A23 brush, I'm gonna go into the ice cold skin frost and just like a bit here and then I'm gonna tap it and then I'm gonna put it on the top of my cheekbones. I'm also going to put a dot above my brow right here, a little on my lip, and right there. Using a flat shader brush, I'm going to go into Star Power, which is a bright matte pink, and I just I just feel like the shade has to be used. <laughs> um, and I'm going to put it on the center of the, that's the wind. It's like full force out there, man. But I'm going to put this in the center. Then I'm going to use the side of that same brush and I'm going to go into the shade Princess and I'm going to put that in front of the pink and blend it in to the pink. Again with the same brush I'm going to go into Violence and I'm going to put that on the outer portion. This is going to just peek through by the time I get my eyeliner on but I'm going to put it on the outer portion and blend it inwards to the pink. And flip my brush over and blend this edge. Then using a Chikohoto GSN 9, I'm going to go into the shade Vanity, which is one of the mattes. And I'm going to use this one through the crease. It's like a deep, a really, it's like a black and purple. this wind. <laughs> it's ridiculous. I've got a teeny tiny bit of fallout here. Not bad at all though. Using a Hakahoto J5523 brush, I'm going to dip into the shade Courtney, which is also a matte. And I'm going to start blending out that crease with that color. Um, looks like I'm going to have to fade up that, um, vanity color. In a minute. The transition shade just did not buff out that vanity color at all. <laughs> so I'm going to dust that brush off and then I'm, I'm going to go into star power. <laughs> We're going to get real bright here. And I'm going to use that to kind of buff out this line right here. 
see if that'll help and it is oh yeah Jeez, I can still kind of see that through there though. I'm gonna go back with the Chikahota brush and I'm not I'm not gonna pick any more product, but I'm gonna blend this a little more upwards. That color just does not want to buff out. Go back in with star power here. I'm kind of having to push it on there because once I start going like this then it buffs off and I can see that vanity underneath again so they're just like not mushing together using a Chikahoto shadow brush I'm going to go into China White which is also a matte and then after that I'm going to go and go back into Courtney and try to buff this out a little more the mattes kind of just aren't yeah see they're they're not fading into each other quite as nicely as I would like I'm going to use this really light fluffy Suku brush and go back into Courtney, that matte transition shade, and kind of feather it through here. I can just see distinct, like distinct, they're just not fading into each other very nicely. Let's go ahead and put, I'm going to, I'm dusting Courtney kind of over all of those colors lightly because I think if I blend too much then it's just going to disappear. So there's the eyeshadow done. I'm going to go ahead and finish up my eye makeup and I'll be right back to put on some lips for you guys. I'm going to take this little Hakuhoto brush and I'm going to go into expensive just a little bit and be sure to really tap my brush off because this one's got some glitter in it. I'm just going to smudge it on the outer portion of my eye. Right kind of in the eyelash, the lash line. For lips, I've got good old Charlotte Tilbury's Lip Cheat in the shade Pillow Talk. I'm going to go ahead and line these lips. And then to fill in my lips, I've got one of Buxom's Bold Gel Lipsticks, and this is in the shade Wicked Pink. And I'm going to go right over the top of that lip liner. So there's the overall finished look using two of Jeffree Star's new makeup products. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Thank you for watching. Do not forget to wear sunscreen and I'll see you guys later. Bye.